What is the street parking vault? What started as the Monday retest workout turned into the weekly vault workout. The vault is a one workout a week for 25 weeks series with new workouts each year. Now the goal of the street parking vault is to help you guys build consistency by completing all 25 vault workouts within a six month period. You can customize the movements in these workouts and choose any variation that fits your abilities. Your scores and weights do not matter. The goal is to maintain consistency from week to week. Remember, you just can't miss. Welcome to this week's vault. This week we are doing E done. Now I'm going to be doing program A with the dumbbells, and Nicole will be doing this one with me using the sandbag and a little modified version of the squat. To see more customization options and the full breakdown of this workout, head on over to my.streetparking.com and make sure you stick around for the end of this, and I'll give you some more tips on the workout. All right, here we go. Eden. It's gonna be a great workout. As you guys know, it's 10 rounds of six renegade row, 12 dumbbell squat. <clears throat> yes, or if you're doing program C like Nicole is, it's six push-up lateral drags, 12 back squats. And feel free, I'm gonna say this from the get-go, to have some fun fitness freedom when it comes to a workout like this. If you wanna do dumbbell squats or barbell back squats and do the sandbag uh, push-up pull across just because I'm a huge fan of the sandbag push-up pull across because it just feels cool and it's something different. It does feel yeah, cool. Yeah, just, you just <laughs> feel cool. Like, hey, you know, come shoot some video of me real quick and so I can post <laughs> on the Instagram, you know? Yeah, and we're out of Project April now, so, you know, you could throw in that barbell, throw in that sandbag and not feel at all guilty about Absolutely. It. As you can tell, Jeb's brought the short shorts today. So, you know, we got, <laughs> the, good, short the, shorts. We got the good weather for sure. <laughs> So he did, a, Jeb did a practice round before we started. Six reps of the push-up renegade rows and the 12 dumbbell squats, and he finished it in a minute. And he said he felt lightheaded. <laughs> and I thought he was gonna slow down his pace, but it looks like he just did no, his oh first no, round he, in a he's, minute. He's flying. <laughs> so a couple ways you can approach a workout like this, for those of you guys who move very efficiently through these movements, you can treat it as a, almost an EMOM format to help keep a pace going. Mm -hmm. Or like every 90 seconds, you know, just kind of have something in mind, a game plan, so you don't feel so lost. Um, 60 seconds to 90 seconds seems to be realistic for a round. Nicole finished it just a little bit over a minute, Jeb a little bit under a minute. Um, we'll see how that affects him a little bit later, like around rounds five, six, seven, that's when it gets really rough. Um, so yeah, because six and 12 are, and that's not a ton of reps, but then you have to remember that we're doing 10 rounds, and yes. I think that pacing is going to slow down a lot. That's so. a lot of squats. It's going to be yeah, a, you know, yeah. a good amount of squats. And you know, if I was saying six push up or six renegade rows, not too bad. 12 squats, not so bad. But you end up your quads burn up from the squats and make the push up holding that plank position a little bit harder. And then your shoulders blow up from the push-ups, making holding the weight at your shoulders for the squats a little bit harder. So I think that really starts to sneak up. Like he just did a minute 20 on his second round. So he already built in another 20 seconds. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, so I think every 90 seconds for sure is doable. And actually to hit the goal, you just need to do a minute and a half to two minute rounds. Okay, perfect. It's 15 and 20. Alex, give us a little bit of a backstory of who Eden is. Yeah, so Eden is a um, goddess in Norse mythology, and she was known as being the keeper of the apples of immortality. So the gods would go to her, ask for an apple, and after they ate it, 
it would like renew their youth. That's right. Yeah. So when they, you know, when Odin started to see like some gray hairs, he'd be like, oh no, it's this is to, not happening. <laughs> time to keep <laughs> my go apples. See, gotta go see Eden. Sure. Yeah. Um, and there's really, we, you know, there's no tie to this workout. This is a workout from 2018, so that's why you know it's nasty if it was from Absolutely. 17, I, I, I 18. Absolutely. I actually remember this workout. <laughs> oh, do really, you? Oh, yeah. It really creeps wow. on me for sure. Yeah. So, um, yeah, just a fun, nasty little workout. Um, but, yeah, nothing really significant. What is the, uh, we have the shift version we haven't really talked about. What is the shift that we have for this workout? Shift's actually very similar. So it's still 10 rounds. It's six push-up plus taps and eight goblet squats. So we've taken out the weighted portion of the renegade row and just done some taps and then reduced the reps of the the reps and the weight of the squats. So actually there's a lot of opportunity for mixing and matching program A and shift today. So like let's say the renegade row was too much. You could just do the push-up plus taps from shift. But you wanted to kind of up the ante on the squats a little bit. You could up the reps to 12 goblet squats. So there's some opportunity for kind of merging those two, challenging yourself a little bit more. I really like what Nicole's done today in the workout. She knows that um, you know she, her knee's really bothering her. She doesn't really want to go full depth as it really you know aggravates her knees. So she's taking an 18 inch box, which puts her slightly above parallel. But I think that's great. She's got good good range of motion still happening here. Um, you know, it's still keeping her heart rate up nice and high. Um, she doesn't have to worry about the lingering effects after this. So she's done a very appropriate modification for how she's feeling. So remember, always keep it humble when choosing mm. what you're going to do yeah. for a workout based on how you feel. Yeah, she was saying uh, her age is catching up to her. And, and unfortunately, since we don't live... And we don't have Eden's apples. We don't, we don't have Eden's apples. <laughs> That's right. She can't eat an apple and get her youthfulness back. But yeah, I, I mean, for sure, guys, if you, if you're not injured and you can move through a full range of motion, I think we would rather you keep that and just like lessen the weight or do like goblet or something like that. But squatting to a target is an excellent uh, customization if you are injured or have some some cranky old joints yeah there's two things that you know i would love for you guys to pay attention to on a squat there's obviously like there's the depth um, but most importantly is the um squeezing of the glutes at the top of the rep yes right make sure you slow down enough to squeeze the glutes lock out those knees before you go back down into that next rep don't try to blast through them don't get lazy right. pay attention to quality of movement if you are newer to this um, for those of you guys who are more experienced, you guys already know what to look for, okay? Uh, no need to come up with excuses. Just slow down just a little bit so you guys can get that, you know, full hip extension at the top. Yeah, that's a good point. Another point, and if you look, if you watch Jeb doing these renegade rows, um, one thing that helps a lot to keep the hips from twisting too much is spreading those feet a bit wider, creating a wider base. And then, like you said, keeping that butt tight, quad squeeze tight. It's still inevitable. I think you're still going to kind of, you the know, twisting hike 100%. the hips. Yeah. That's another yeah. thing, too. Um, don't ever feel discouraged. Like, oh, man, I've broken down in form. With intensity, form does break down. I, I want you guys to be very um, Yeah, there's some room for error, for Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. Yeah. There's going to be room for error. The one thing that we just want to make sure that you guys know is when it gets too sloppy and you're getting all sporadic and all over the place, that's not good. Yeah. That's time for you to take a breath, you know, catch a breather. Take a good 10 seconds off and get right back into it so you're focusing on what's going on. Yeah, it's just like a natural, like, resting point, right? Don't exactly. get discouraged. Just think of it as, like, okay, I just need to take a breath, shake it out, get back to it. One kind of, another fail-safe that Nicole had in place since um, it's hard to change the weight of a sandbag out in the middle of a workout um, versus like you could just have another pair of dumbbells out and ready as a backup plan. But she was saying if her pace started to fall off of that minute and a half to two minutes per round, she was just going to reduce the reps of the squats, which for those of you who have only one weight for a sandbag, if that ends up happening, reducing the reps is a great option for customizing program C for today. Where uh, Do you know where they're at? What's that? Do you know where they're at? I don't. I have no idea. I'm hopefully. Take a guess. I think he's on round six. Jeff, yeah, are you on six? Yes. Great. Over halfway. 
crushing it. So he's at eight minutes now. Oh, here's he's another quick. Track. Yeah, this is yeah. another thing that I've realized now. Um, you know, over the course of the five years that you know, when, when sync posts, anytime there's Renegade Rose, a lot of people are like, "Oh, my hand, the palm of my yes. hands hurt." It's yeah. like, don't slam the dumbbells down. But also do know that it once you get tired, you know, that tends to happen. You tend to just relax the arm on the descend and you let you, you let the weight take over and you know you slam the palm uh, to the dumbbell. So unless you're paying attention and focusing on that, most likely your palm is gonna take a quite quite a quite a beating. Yeah. But it's okay. It's, it's uh, kind of like, like you said, like your form breaking down. It's one of those things. It's kind of inevitable, guys. It's one of those things you just kind of have to accept that it's going to happen correct. to some extent. You can definitely, like, hold it off for a little bit longer yeah. with technique. But um, unless we did a ton of renegade rows, a ton of push-up pull-across, that kind of stuff in the programming, more consistently, it's just one of those things that is gonna happen. Yeah, I definitely am gonna have a lot of fun with this one. What I like, you know, for me, 40 pound dumbbells won't really challenge um, me so quickly. Like, obviously, I'd be able to move pretty quickly, but given the goal time and what's expected, I'm gonna definitely have some fitness freedom with this. I'm gonna go barbell back squat. That way um, you can go a little heavier. Absolutely, yeah, yeah I, I have yeah. a strong squat. So for me, knowing what's gonna push me is gonna go heavier on the squat with the barbell and have my renegade rows ready with the dumbbells. So I'm really excited for a workout like this, combining the movements. And do I care about the you know login of score? Just so I, uh, no, no one's paying attention to it. I know what I right. did. I'm gonna log it, and that way I can get my uh, my badge. That's right. And uh, that's all. That's all that matters. Keep that trophy case looking nice. Absolutely. <laughs> I know when I do this workout, I'll probably break once for the renegade rows from the start. Maybe sure. like four and two, and I'm gonna take a little breather between the renegade row and the squats and try to do the squats unbroken the whole way just because man it's such a pain to get those that weight up to your shoulders and like once it's there i just want to keep it there and get the set done yeah so the way that i think i can do that pacing wise and effort wise is just taking a little bit more time between movements that way i can that's good that's yeah, good. go unbroken or, or just one break for both. Something to expect, too, especially with if you're doing the dumbbell route, um, your grip might be something that starts, you know, really playing a, a factor in this workout where you're going to want to break because, look, you know, Jeb's just holding on, and mm -hmm. then for the Renegade Row, it's just more holding on. Yep. So, you know, just expect that to happen when if using dumbbells. Yeah, sandbag's a little bit more forgiving. It is. In that regard. So they're coming up on 11 minutes thinking they have maybe three, two rounds left. He might be on, what do you think, round eight right now? Round eight, Jeb? No, no, no. Oh, sh oh no. <laughs> He's, okay, 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 okay. Phew, crisis oh, averted. Oh my goodness. <laughs> he is crushing it. Sorry, Jeb. They are crushing it. Looks like they're both gonna finish on the low end of the goal. So a couple of things, customizations, if let's say the push-up is breaking down in the renegade row, uh -huh. you could drop to your knees, right. do a push-up from the knees, and then pop up back into the plank for the row. Um, we find that's a better position to do the rows from. It's, it's actually so really hard to row from the oh, knees. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, but you could still drop to them for the push-up part, uh, or you could just do the, um, the shift movements, push-up plus taps, you could do those elevated. It's a little bit tougher to do a, a row or a pull across from a, an elevated position, but those are great options if you're struggling with those renegade rows. You could also change this into a push-up plus pull across if you're doing dumbbells. So it would look a lot more like the sandbag version where you're pushing up from your hands and just pulling a weight across each rep. And then Nicole is showing a great customization for the squats, just squat into a target. It's crazy how much this vault is flying this year. I mean. I know, it's it, crazy. This is 18 already. That's, that's wild. Yeah. Can you think of what your favorite vault has been so far? Um, oof. I feel like everyone that I've done has really been uncomfortable, to be honest. They, yeah. they, um, I will say the Loki one was, um, that was a very challenging one. I, I've had a couple, though, <laughs> that really put me on my back. Yeah. Um, 
So yeah, I, I can't say. Um, There's definitely been a couple. Which one did you program? It was the bike, squat, oh, squat lunge, lunge yeah. bike. Mm -hmm. What was that one? What was the name? I forget now. I do not know the name. Yeah. Oh, it was. Um, was uh, it? It wasn't Odin. It uh, was Mjolnir. It was Mjolnir. It Thor. Or was it Thor? Or Mjolnir? It was Mjolnir. Mjolnir. I remember saying that Carol the hammer was coming yeah, down yeah, on yeah. Carolina. <laughs> it was Mjolnir. That one is kind of burned in my brain right now. That one was nasty. I did it with the rower. Ooh. Yeah. Rower and dumbbells. It was pretty rough. All right, Nicole's finished. Nice. I expect the sandbag to take to be a little quicker. Yeah, absolutely. Across the board, just there's only one pull, you know, versus Correct. the Renegade Row. There's two pulls, um, and then overall, it's a lighter weight for most people. Their sandbag's gonna be lighter, but that's cool. Just go faster. Keep it, that intensity up. I feel like Jeb's either on nine or ten. I think he's wrapping up. I okay. think this is his last one. Nice. Yeah, there's breaks happening on the Renegade Rose. Expected. Yeah. Totally fine. Yeah. That was four. This is five and two. I like going over the halfway point if I'm going to break. So four and two to me is more appealing than three and three. Just mentally, I can I, get back I to it. I 100% you know? agree with you. Yep. I don't like the halfway mark. No. I don't. All right. Last 12 reps from Jeb. Coming up on that 15 minute mark. The low end of the goal range. He is sweating profusely. Oof. There he nice goes. Job. There it is. Excellent. Woo! Woo! Oh, man. Finished just under the low end of the goal time. Remember, guys, this is a past workout. It was last completed on August 27th of 2018. So our OG members... If you've been around for a while, you guys can <laughs> head back, see if that's a, that's a score that you pulled over from Wattify and uh, see what your time was, and then you'll have something to to shoot for or just compare your, you know, your score to from, I don't know, what's this, almost four years ago, to three and a half years ago. That was fun to watch. I'm looking forward to doing this one. And we'll turn it over to Jeb for his tips. All right. Yeah, that was awesome. Um, maybe a little sneaky. I highly recommend breaking up the Renegade Rose from the beginning. Uh, it's a little bit of a tempting number of reps to do. So a lot of us think, oh, I can do six. And you're right, maybe you can. But having those dumbbells or barbell on your shoulders fatigues the shoulders uh, more than you think. So like even that second set of Renegade Rows, I was like, oh, okay, uh, this is different. So break those up early to something that you can manageably do four of, three or four. And it shouldn't be super taxing for at least the first few rounds. So that might mean you're going a little lighter on the dumbbells or, you know, going to a knee push-up or something. So make sure that you're able to, uh, you know, that those renegade rows aren't just super, super hard from the beginning because they're going to get hard. And then for the squats, I don't know if you could see, but um, I kind of experimented doing them unbroken, doing them unbroken faster, um, breaking them up into two sets. I would say if you break them up, no more than two sets. So no more than one break in any round. If you're breaking more than that, you're kind of missing the point of the workout. You're probably gonna fall off pace. We want those squats to be something that you can uh, do indefinitely under a minute. Um, and uh, again, first few rounds, squats felt fine and then probably around round six it was like the last few reps really started to uh to burn and the reason why i say break up those squats is again to give your shoulders a break not because 
they're necessarily really hard to do, you know, for your legs to squat down and stand back up with the weight, but you want to be able to sustain a good pace. Remember how these movements complement each other. So that's why it's a good idea to break up the squats or I rarely say this, do your squats faster. I found that that was what worked best for me as I would try and rip out like seven to nine squats and then maybe take a little pause at the top and go a little bit slower for the remaining reps. But that for me was a lot easier than putting the dumbbells down, picking them back up. And I spent less time with those dumbbells on my shoulders. So the renegade rows that followed those squats felt much more doable. Anyways, 10 rounds feels like a lot, but honestly, I feel like that workout went really quick. Um, and uh, also, do use something to keep track of your rounds because uh, I felt like I was having to dedicate a lot of mental energy trying to remember where I was at in that one. So mark down your rounds. Other than that, it's a good one. Enjoy it. E done. E done. We done. <laughs>
head on over to my.streetparking.com.